Hello friends, so today we are discuss the first four problems from the Ad Coder Beginner Contest 186. Uh, according to me, the fourth problem is only good, but the first three problems are a little bit decent, they're not too hard. But I will also be making videos on them. I will like quickly move over the first two problems because according to me, like there are some also beginners and newcomers which want that these problems solutions should also be made because they can learn something new. And if you don't like want the solution, you can just jump to the next part. I will be putting the timestamps in this video description. So let's start over the first problem. It's very simple. You're given that you have a truck which can carry at most N kilograms. You have bricks and every brick weighs W kilogram. How many bricks you can load? So it's a very general problem. You just divide N divided by W and that's a problem. Uh, so not need to discuss over this problem. The second problem is also a little bit simple. It says that you have uh, H horizontal rows and W vertical columns is like a grid you have and every grid position has some stacks so it has some like uh, AI so every AI block in that whole matrix has a block of stacks so like there are some stacks of blocks and then what you can do in that here is you can you, your task is to actually make all the stacks equal in height you can only make them equal in height by removing out the blocks from each stack so as you can assume that you have some stacks and every stack is made up of blocks and you can you have to make all the stacks equal but you can only remove out, remove out blocks so the simplest thing here is if you like there are some random stacks and if you take some random height and try to make everything equal to that random height then it's very difficult because there can be some smaller stack heights and you cannot reach that point so the simplest way is just make all the stack heights equal to the smallest stack possible because in that case when you reach the smallest stack possible there is no more stack which is smaller so then all will become equal because you only have to remove it out so the simplest way to find out the solution for this problem is find out the smallest stack among all the stacks and then find out how many blocks you have to remove out from each stack so that its height become equal to the smallest stack cool so i don't think so the code is required i'll also show it out but uh, you can find out that, that the smallest stack among all of them is two so try to make everything equal to two so if you want to take out one from this and one from this and it will become answer two so how many blocks you have to remove is two so this is the code yeah find out the smallest and then find out the ith stack minus the stack you want to reach so now move on to the third problem it says that Takashi hits the number seven. So you don't want a number seven, but uh, so you are given some number. So you have to find out actually among all numbers from one to n, what all numbers do not contain seven in the decimal format and in the octal format. You know the decimal format, right? The octal format is like, I'll give you an example how to find an octal format. I hope you know the format to find out the binary number. Maybe you have some 27. And you have to find out whether this number or find out this number in binary terms so how you can find out you just take two find out the remainder of that number as you can see uh, the remainder is one and divide this number by two which is like uh, like one and then three then again like do the same thing divided by two the number is formed is six and the remainder is one and so on so these are the numbers which when you write down will be its binary representation the same you can use this, like logic to find out the octal representation. You have 27. If you want to divide it, now you have to divide it by 8 every time. So if you divide it by 8, then the remainder of this is equal to the closest is like 24, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 3. And the uh, like number you have to divide it out is 3 also. So 8 to 24. And then again divided by 8. So that the 0 and then 3. So the octal representation of 27 is 3, 3. So the, it so it means that this number doesn't contain consist of any seven, but twenty seven as a whole consists of seven. So this number is not valid because you have to find out the number of the number of way or a total number of numbers which do not consist of seven in the binary sorry decimal representation as well as octal representation. So because the number is up to twenty to power five, there are very small numbers like the length of that number is small. So you can just like do this answer in just O of n just iterate over every possible number from 1 till n and find out whether this consists of 7 consists of 7 then the answer is no you do not consist of like do not consider it if it do not consist of 7 then find out its octal representation and if it doesn't doesn't consist of 7 in its octal representation also then count that number out 
now uh, i'll take down to the code part now but uh, what you can easily see in this problem is that uh, i hope you get the intuition how to find out the octal representation so this is the code for this problem as you can see also what i'm finding out is you can easily find out like whether it consists of seven in an a number in decibel representation in o of length of that number which is like maximum five iteration and if you find out the representation in octal representation you have to divide it by eight every time so it's like log base eight and the number is n so that many steps you'll take so the number of steps in total for every number is very small so you can easily find it out in o of n now so this is total number of n from one till n for every number find out whether is seven which means that whether this number consists of seven if it consists of seven then continue out don't consider it if is octal number represent out how many whether this number in octal representation consists of seven if it consists of true then if it number it out true that it consists of seven and then do not consider it continue out else increment the total and find out the output of the total so this is seven function will be finding out whether any di digit of that number consists of seven i hope you know this code just keep on dividing and finding out the last digit if it's seven then it are true that it consists of seven else keep on dividing it by 10 and same you can do this for octal like do a remainder with eight the numbers will be from zero till seven so if it turns out to turn out to be seven then the answer is true that it consists of any number which is seven else the answer is like keep on dividing by eight and if it doesn't consist of seven then the answer is false so this is the problem c i hope you get the intuition and the code itself i will be posting out all the codes in the description then the problem d is good in which it states that you are given n numbers and you have to find out the sum of every pair of number in its modular form as you can see uh, modulus form sorry so ai minus aj just do a mod of that number and then find out the summation of all pairs and find out this value and that's the problem uh, so i can take out this example as you can see 512 so this is 5 1 and 2 now the first thing which come to my mind is is sorting this array because i have to obviously do this answer in o of like n or o of n log n i cannot do this in o of n square because the concerns are too big now the first thing is can i sort this whole array is sorting this whole array beneficial for me okay uh if i take out any pair let's assume that i want to find out the difference between 5 and 2 then finding out difference between 5 and 2 actually give you some value if i even sort this whole area out then also i will take this whole that because i have to take every pair every number as a pair even after sorting it out the number may might swap it can become like this 1 2 and 5 now if this number swap out also then i have to take out this pair which is 5 and 2 and then the, the difference between them will remain out same and thus you will always take the same pair and it, b because the difference is same why because you are doing a mod and thus sorting is beneficial for us but why sorting is beneficial for us let's see now like maybe I've, i after sort this out i will take turn out, turn out to be one to five but i will take on some another example one three four and five okay now what you can see in this problem is or first see for one two and five only what are the values the answer is you have to find out difference between this two which is like mm -hmm. one and two the difference between is one the difference between two and five is three and the difference between one and five is four so i've write down in this manner to make you understand one point you can easily see something very common in this example the thing here is this arrow can be broken down or this larger arrow can be broken down into smaller arrows which which we have like which we can compute out easily so as you can see i can come like divide this larger arrow in this format like and total sum this is one and four four and three sorry and that's because i can find out the difference between every two consecutive numbers in o of n like i can iterate over all the numbers and find out the difference in o of n and then what you can easily say here is if i if i can find out the difference then i can find out how many times a single part is occurring what i mean by this is as you can see this this difference one like one minus two or two minus one sorry this difference is occurring two times why because this difference is occurring one time in this format when i take down this numbers two and one and also when i'm taking out one and five 
this difference is occurring but if you break down this whole difference into two part it is like one and three and thus this difference is occurring one more time and this difference is occurring two times so both of the difference are occurring two times and thus this strike my mind intuitively and like instantaneously that if i find out how many times each con like conjugate difference is occurring in the whole answer then i can just add out that like conjugate differences now i have to find out how many times it is occurring so just draw some more test cases and then it will become more conjugate intuitive for you so as you can see this is 1 2 3 5 if i take out so let's add it out if i take out 1 and 2 then 1 and 2 as a gap then it like this difference is added so i'm adding out how many time this difference is adding like this difference this difference, this difference. So this, this difference is adding one time now diff difference if i take one and three as a pair then this difference is added one more time and one and three because i'm taking so it's like taking this as an arrow so you can divide this as a difference of one two and two three so this difference is added one time again and this difference is again one time added now if i take out one and four as a difference then this difference is added one time this difference is added one time and this difference is added one time if I take one and five as a difference, which means that I have to, if I take one and five as a pair and find out the difference, it will turn out to be four, which is actually this arrow. And I can break down this arrow into these differences, which is like this difference, this difference, this difference, and this. Difference. So it means that if I take out a difference, if I take out only pairs of one, two, one, three, one, four, and one, five, this number of times, every difference is occurring. I hope you get the intuition till now, which is like four times, three times, two times, and one time. Now, if I now go, go on to the next pair, which is like 2, 3, if I take out 2, 2, 3, then this is adding one time. Then if I take 2 and 4, this is adding one more time. Sorry, one time this is adding and one time this is adding, so this is two times. If I take 2, 5, so this is adding one time, this is adding one time, and this is adding one time. If I take now 3 and 4, so this is adding one time. If I take 3 and 5, then this is adding one time, this is adding one time. If I'm taking 4 and 5, this is adding one time. So now as you can see the first is occurring four times the second is occurring three times but in two times like three times but it is occurring two times the, the third is occurring two times two times but it is occurring in a like th like in a triplet the four like the last one is occurring four times but it is occurring four times like one the the answer for them is one but it is occurring four times and so on so it's just very simple to observe the pattern now i hope you get the point so you have to see that if you are taking the difference between the two consecutive numbers which is the first position then how many numbers are left like four numbers are left till now so four numbers are left and like it will be occurred one time like you have to count four one time then if i take out two and three as a pair then this is like the difference between do these two numbers is one and you have to count out one how many times how many numbers are left three times the three three numbers are left and they will be counted out twice and then this difference is counted out thrice the difference between them and how many numbers are left so two numbers are left so three numbers are left and so on so that's the logic for this problem i hope you get the intuition now so i'll take on to the code part now so the code is also very simple uh okay I think so. okay 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 thanks so for this oh, oh sorry yeah i'm going to delete that code part. so this is the code take the input of n numbers this is a Take the input of all those n numbers, sort it out, which I told you. After sorting out, this is the total number of because the total summation. Now, iterate from i till the second last element because you are taking it in pair. So, addition of the i is num like because they are sorted. So, i plus one element. So, you have to take on this difference, which is the ith element minus the like the ith plus one element minus the i element, which is the difference between these two elements. And how many times this is occurring? So, how many numbers are left? There's like because we are doing from indexing zero so n minus one which is the like four minus i so like four elements are left for the first part so n minus one minus i and you have to also multiply it with i plus one because i is zero so which is like first time it is one time so the first difference is counted one time which is four the second difference is three uh, it like the three numbers are left so this is counted twice and so on so because you have to also multiply with n i plus one and this is the difference uh, like uh, how many numbers are left and this is the difference between the consecutive elements and just do a total among all the like among all the consecutive numbers and then add a total and then just print out the total i hope you get the intuition and the logic for this problem also if you still have it out you can mention it on the comment box i'll see you next one keep coding bye